Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Albert Einstein who says there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle that most of us think, like other is as though everything is a miracle that you enjoy the life, right? And that is our scripture always talk about that, right? But we do not follow it unfortunately <coughs> and getting into depression and other problems, right? In modern time. <coughs> So, let us look at what we learnt in the last lecture. Basically, uh, if you look at, we looked at the various regimes of turbulent uh, flame, premix flame. One is of course, the weak tur uh, turbulence flame, right? Other is wrinkle laminar uh, flame, the flamelet in eddies and distributed uh, reaction kind of things, right? Uh, we uh, looked at the various kind of non-dimensional parameters, right? Reynolds number and then uh, dam color number and then uh, uh, root mean square velocity ratio and uh, all, the, all scale ratios, right? L naught by delta L, L k by delta L, all those things we have looked at and looked at a Vorghi diagram. And uh, if you look at, we uh, basically uh, discuss about the distributed reaction zone which occurs in the low uh, Reynolds number and low dam color number. But that is very difficult to establish. However, one can establish using a stirred reactor. Stirred means you will have to give some jets uh, like uh, various directions and put together and you do that. Now, <coughs> we will be looking at uh, the turbulent burning velocity. Because uh, as I had told earlier that laminar burning velocity is very fundamental to the premix frame. Why? Because the all other parameters like minimum ignition energy, quenching distance and then uh, your flammability limits and other things will be related to the laminar burning velocity including flame thickness. So, similarly turbulent burning velocity is very important, but it is uh, not that easy how to define it because of fact that turbulent burning velocity it depends on the characteristics of the fluid flow. right? And, uh, velocity at which unburned mixture enter the flame zone uh, normal to the flame because the surface is so convoluted that which one you will take as surface, each zone you will be corrugated or a different. So, that is also very difficult and uh, that is why it is very difficult to measure the velocity of unburned gas near the uh, turbulent flame and then we will be looking at uh, some average sense. Right? And that is why it is difficult to measure the way we did in the laminar burning velocity. So, uh, that is S t is equal to what we will be talking about is S t is equal to m dot is nothing but reactant flow rate into rho u is the density of unburned mixture and A dash is the time average of flame surface, right. The flame surface will be uh, changing, right, okay, with respect to time. So, uh, if you look at uh, the flame surface will be changing, it need not to be so regular, right? It will be, this is your flame surface, right? If I take one dimensional flame, right, flame surface, which is uh, with respect to time, right? And this is at one instant of time, there might be another instant of time, which you can be like another one, this is with respect to time, right. So, at different instant of, sorry, this is, oh, I am sorry, this is with respect to x, but this is a two instant of time, t is equal to t uh, 1 and this is corresponding to t is equal to t 2, two instant of time, that will be changing, we have already seen. So, then you will have to take average over the time and then you will consider that A dash. 
right and which is need not to be uh, really uh, one dimensional in nature also. So, therefore, uh, uh, we will define that way and we will be trying to get expression for that for uh, that matter what we will be doing we will be considering the weak turbulent flame regimes right where the extension of laminar flame and uh, that means the flame will be basically uh, similar to laminar because that low turbulence will be there the flame surface will be looking to be smooth it won't be affecting that much you know and turbulence scale is order of laminar flame thickness that is delta L right. Of course, the ST will be greater than SL which is expected I am like we will see how it is right. And uh, this is uh, because of fact that with increase in thermal diffusion that we will see. <coughs> we have seen uh, basically uh, we know that SL uh, this is derived from very simple uh, relationship. We have seen that SL is basically proportional to root over alpha by R. What is that? RR is reaction rate, right? You can say m dot triple dash, uh, you know, f average, right? And similarly, we can define, right? S L is sorry uh, S T is proportional to alpha T R R right. If I will assume that the reaction rate is not affected by the turbulence okay. that means reaction rate would not be uh, will be remaining same for both the laminar and turbulent I can arrive at that S T by S L alpha T divided by alpha L okay. I am saying alpha L. Uh, means thermal alpha is the thermal diffusivity this is thermal diffusivity right and uh, now if you look at for the if i take consider the prandtl number as same for laminar and turbulent right which need not to but if i'll consider that we know this prandtl number is equal to um, nu by alpha right and if I say it is for turbulent and this will be for turbulent and similarly if I say this is laminar right L by alpha L and if I consider that uh, parental number is uh, basically same that means parental number T is equal to parental number of laminar then what will happen? I can uh, write down the S T by S L is basically about S T by S L is equal to I can write down nu by uh, T by nu f alpha 0.5 for laminar for uh, pi flow we know for pi flow we know that is um, nu t by nu is equal to 0 0.01 re right. So, then if I will say this is equation 1 and then substitute these values in equation 1 and I will get S t by S l is um, equal to 0 0.1 root over re. So, this is a relationship you can get basically from the phenomenological analysis this is that uh, turbulent burning velocity uh, is proportional to the laminar burning velocity and depends on the Reynolds number right. But keep in mind that this is having limitation right. What is the limitation? That is if this uh, alpha t or the nu t is 0 there is no turbulence right then what will happen that turbulent velocity will be 0 right if Reynolds number is not there is very very small right it will not or in, in other words if I look at this expression there will be some kind of a limitation right and uh, that is uh, nu t right 
tending towards 0, S t will be tending towards 0, right. Of course, when you put this Reynolds number, uh, this will not be uh, rho v d y nu, like nu t is 0, then this will be very, very, what you call Reynolds number very high, it will be very kind of having no meaning. So, that has to be looked at it and that is the limitation of this uh, model, right. So, let us look at some experimental data S t by S l versus the Reynolds number. You can see that uh, with certain Reynolds number, let us say uh, that around maybe 2300, right. This is uh, Re is equal to 2300, that um, you know S t and S l is not changing, it is remaining almost constant. But afterwards, it changes right with the uh, power to the you know 0.5 you can say or around that it need not be 0.5 it may be something. So, it is uh, kind of thing, but once it is uh, uh, in this regime that we call it as a uh, weak turbulence regime right this is weak turbulence regime right. But here of course, it is different, these are the experimental uh, means it became almost linearly increasing, this is a parabolic in shape kind of thing, right. So, uh, this is a simple relation which says state that uh, from this um, one can say that this is uh, the relationship what we have derived is basically is matching or similar to the experimental data, these are all experimental data, right kind of things. So, <coughs> by this one can really uh, you know determine the laminar uh, turbulent burning velocity. There is another regime where the uh, wrinkled laminar uh, flame which will be occurring. So, in this case if uh, your uh, fuel plus oxidizer mixture is moving a certain velocity which is having a some fluctuating velocities and it may affect the flame keep in mind that it will be distorting the flame right it would not be changing in the uh, it will be not affecting the uh, inside the flame thickness kind of thing so <coughs> and that we call it as a wrinkle laminar flame the flamelets in the flame surface propagates are at a some laminar burning velocity. So, if you look at locally, if you look at it will be moving with a laminar burning velocity and turbulence causes only the wrinkling of the vessel, let me corrugate it, make it corrugated, right, wrinkle, right, the surface <coughs> and uh, that is of course, we, which will occur uh, when the uh, Reynolds number and dam color root over uh, is very large values right that means the length scale is much larger than the laminar burning uh, well, uh, thickness flame thickness so turbulent burning velocity if you look at is given by we can do a mass uh, you know balance that is rho u a star a dash is the average velocity i mean if you take all those things with respect to time and average you may get something which i have shown here like into st st with which this will be moving right this is a just a, a hypothetical thing, it is moving with ST, right. And into rho u and a w s l, a w is the wrinkle uh, area, surface area, right, into s l which will be moving, right. So, then from this I can cancel it out, right, and this is uh, basically ST by s l is equal to a w by a average. And according to dam color, the constant laminar burning velocities, right, can be uh, as the AFL, right, it is a flamelet um, surface area divided by A uh, average. If I take this is average velocity, right, VU by SL, VU is the velocity with which it will be the fluid will be moving, right, in this uh, case. And in the similar way, I can also find out turbulent velocities like uh, related into A w that is a wrinkle laminar divided by A average is nothing but because the wrinkling is occurring due to V dash R m s values right into S l. So, uh, we know that A w uh, A 
this is a f l right I can write down here a f l the flame surface is equal to basically a average plus a w this is due to the uh, this wrinkling surface that will be there and this is the average which will be taking place right <coughs> at uh, that will be at any instant of a kind of thing it will be given so therefore i can write down st by sl is nothing but your a f l divided by a, a, a dash and this if you look at i can write down as is equal to a f l by a is equal to that and a f l is nothing but your a uh, average plus a w divided a w is nothing but your 1 plus um, a w by a dash and a w by a average is nothing but your b dash r m s by s l right and this is uh, relationship is basically known as the uh, dam color relationship right which is uh, and keep in mind that that uh, when uh, you know it will give a relation uh, linear relationship b dash rms is 0 st uh, divided by sl is equal to 1 right that is the thing because if it is there is no turbulence then naturally st sl will be uh, equal to 1 right <coughs> And um, but however, this doesn't really predict the experimental data. Then uh, Klimov has uh, talked about uh, taking the experimental data and uh, find out ST by SL is equal 3.5 uh, B dash RMS divided by SL power to the 0.7. Keep in mind that this is having a problem. Problem is that when V RMS is zero, that means st by sl will be 0 right and which is not true because if turbulence is not there right that does not mean the laminar burning velocity will not be there right. So, therefore, this is the limitation of this model right. So, uh, that is the limitation of this model and then uh, the Clavin and William has given another model right which is st by sl is equal 0.051 plus 1 plus 8 c v dash rms square and then the whole square of root over then again root over of the entire thing right and if you expand this thing by in the taylor series you will get basically st by sl right is equal to 1 plus c v rms divided by sl whole square right that you will get and keep in mind that this is possible only when that uh, for small values of v r m s divided by s l this is a valid one right. So, this however, it is giving a some consistent value v r m s is 0 this s t by s l is nothing but your equal to 1 that means that uh, uh, if turbulence is not there laminar velocity and turbulent velocity is equal to same right that is a consistent and um, keep in mind these are all little phenomenological analysis you may find several relationship for the even for linkel laminar uh, burning velocities uh, even you can get several relationship for turbulent uh, velocity and uh, laminar velocity ratio uh, in this regime in literature however i am discussing uh, these three of them and uh, if you look at the experimental data you will find for sl is equal to 40 centimeter which is corresponding to methane methane air and phi is equal to 1 right tu is 298 kelvin p is equal to uh, 1 atmospheric pressure right you will find that uh, this is uh, uh, changing according to dam color relationship changing with respect to v dash uh, divided by s l linearly right. And these are all experimental data and uh, Klimov uh, actually is data is matching well with the experimental data right. And uh, unfortunately the Clavin and William does not match I have not included does not match with experimental it may be little bit better than the dam color but is still away from that 
right. And uh, this is about uh, you know how to uh, handle the turbulent uh, burning velocity for wrinkled laminar flame. Let us look at distributed uh, reaction zone right uh, kind of uh, regime where uh, what will be happening that uh, <coughs> this is the ADs which will be coming over here right and this regime as I had told you earlier that it is uh, happening <coughs> uh, where like intensity high intensities are uh, of the wrinkling is there and distinct regime for with a small pockets of reactants are formed right <coughs> and the, you will get some kind of finger like structures and you will get uh, where uh, this is a very very turbulence level will be very high as I told that it will be occurring in uh, it won't be occurring in the practical devices uh, kind of things till now nobody has designed such a device that where the turbulence level will be with the smaller Reynolds number the turbulence will be higher and uh, the but however the ADs will be smaller in size right. Uh, this is your uh, it is possible of course however in laboratory scale is uh, a stirred reactor you can think of a reactor here right these are the jets right where the uh, fuel can be coming over here these are the jets with which uh, the mixture will be coming right and these are impinging into a surface right so that what happened the intense mixing will be taking place and this is known as stirred reactor it will be mixing you can think of putting a fan and then moving it at a very high velocity and you are mixing you know that way are you getting it is a very intense mixing is taking place so that means scale will be very very small right and this is a stirred uh, reactor Uh, which will be taking place, <coughs> but that is quite difficult and uh, I have already told you that this is in the Borghi diagram where dam color number less than unity and uh, Reynolds number is a very very small right and quite difficult to occur in practical device in laboratory such situation are created using a stirred reactor I have already discussed and chemical reactions are not completed in reaction zone rather occur in the post flame region because the mixing is so high that reaction will not be really taking place you know that is another problem with this kind of things right regime uh, needs more understanding however people have given relationship st is equal to 6.4 uh, brms that v average divided brms 3 power by. this is a semi empirical relation what is being used kind of things right which is uh, of course meant only for the uh, turbulent uh, you know velocity and when it will be uh, zero this vrms of course this will be there won't be any turbulent velocity kind of things so let us look at uh, flamelet in eddies right and according to the Voorhees diagram this region between the upper bold line lk by delta l equal to 1 and l not by delta l right and uh, this is the flamelet ADs which will be taking place and uh, keep in mind that is here what will be happening that large ADs large parcel of unburned gases which will be entering into this is your reaction zone right this is your reaction zone and when it is uh, entering into that it will be undergoing uh, kind of uh, changing its shape and size it will be there will be like uh, breaking down the eddies and when it breaks down it will be trying to mix with the uh, hot gases and uh, its surface area will be increasing right and as a result the interfacial contact between the burnt and unburnt gases will be taking place in some places it may extinguish that means there will be some kind of a flame which will be for example there is a burning is taking place right here burning right and this is unburnt right 
unburnt. If it is unburnt, then what will happen? There will be some extinction region will be there. So, as a result, the combustion is determined by the rate at which right, um, the parcel of unburnt ga gases are broken into smaller, right, a smaller one caused by the ADs. And that means the burning rate is governed by the turbulent mixing rate rather than the chemical uh, reaction rate. So, that you will have to keep in mind and this is uh, basically uh, as I told that parcels of unburnt gases and fully burnt gases you will be getting right. And uh, flame mass burning will be dependent on rho C f and uh, that is basically concentration of fuel uh, right. Uh, no sorry C f is a constant right C f is a constant Y f R m s dash is basically mass fraction this is mass fraction of fuel right this is fluctuating mass fraction right mass fraction of fuel and epsilon is your dissipation rate and K e is the kinetic energy right. And uh, if you look at the C f which is a constant right this is a constant it may vary 1 to you know 100 generally people uh, about 10 that it is a little lower side. And uh, as I told that uh, the uh, epsilon is basically the turbulent dissipation energy. If you look at turbulent dissipation energy uh, by definition we know this is nothing but your kinetic energy change in the time. And uh, this kinetic energy we know that kinetic energy turbulent kinetic energy is basically 3 by 2 V R m s square. And uh, this is possible when this is for the isotropic turbulent flow right. What do you mean by isotropic turbulent flow? That is V x dash is equal to uh, you know of course, R m s V y R m s dash is equal to V z R m s dash it will be uniform, but that is not the case in most cases, but we have taken for this right. And uh, then I can say change in that is nothing but by 3 by 2 V R m s square right. Uh, divide by change in basically uh, if you look at this is nothing but integral scale by V R m s right. And uh, <coughs> now if you look at uh, this uh, I want to find out what is this epsilon by K e t is nothing but your V R m s by L naught is not it I am taking this this is nothing but your K e t right. You can say initially it is 0 and then that thing and then you are doing that. So, this is uh, proportional that then I can write down this m dot triple dash is basically rho f y f dash r m s is equal nothing but v r m s dash divided by L naught. That means, this mass fraction rate of the fuel right you can say that is a conjunction for unit volume will be dependent on what? Dependent on the fluctuating velocity of the uh, component of R m s velocity divided by the integral scale. So, that will dictate and also the fluctuating mass fraction of the fuel right. So, it will be uh, the reaction rate will be basically not calculated from the Arrhenius from the turbulence right. Wherever there will be mixing, so it will be getting consumed because the reaction is very fast here as compared to the as compared to the your mixing time right. So, this is the thing which is being used for the eddies and we can uh, really use this uh, for finding out the uh, uh, burning velocities and other things. So, with this uh, I will stop over and in the uh, let us look at this kind of uh, flame in eddies 
the occurs in spark ignition engine and premix burner and also the high voltage burner uh, high velocity burners and uh, with this we will stop over in the next lecture we will be discussing about basically diffusion flame right thank you very much <coughs>